G'day, welcome to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a global expedition and research boat. We've launched Brewpeg, it's been a while, and we're currently in Fiji. I gave some of that to lie. So we're down in Brisbane, we're about five hours south of where the boat normally is. We're down here for Jess, she's doing a whole bunch of medical tests. We need to jump on her condition, it's got a little bit worse. We need to find out what's going on with it. We're also down here to have a look at some um, battery suppliers. We wanted to talk to some local people that are um, putting together lithium cells. We want to see if they're going to work for the boat. And if so, we'll grab one of those and take it back as a test. And we're also carrying on with our stabilizers, getting the top of the arms aligned and into the sliders. Last week you saw us get stuck into the TIG welding on the top of the arm. We unleashed the fury that is the mag drill. We cut some stuff. And we finally solved how we're going to do the top arm alignment pin. We're driving through Brisbane right underneath the stadium. So we've just come back from um, some testing for Jess and we're just heading into Brisbane um, CBD to grab some food. There's some cafes that we go to that are pretty cool. When we used to live here, we sort of knew we were in walking distance to the CBD, so we knew a lot of the nice cafes and stuff to go to. Going up. Maybe it's just where they park cranes when they don't know what to do. <laughs> um, look at all these cakes. These are all oh my gosh, that's what I Yeah, they're all I was never the one to write up a song for just anyone. I, I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversation. This is Brisbane River. We used to have our boat moored right down the end here. And that mooring field that you can see right down the end, there's pile moorings and there's also boats at anchor. We used to be living at anchor. How do you feel after getting your test done? It was good. Feel, more, feel not too bad actually. You're more sprightly than I've seen you in a long time. Yeah. I feel so free, oh my sweet baby. So stuck, I kept on playing my part, wanted to give up because nothing was changing. But with you, it's so clear, and now that you're here, I see colors and never respect them. So, back to the grind. Sneak peek, this is what the plate assembly looks like. This is what goes on top of the arms. You can see the pins there, and you can see the cheeks tacked on. We're going to trim these blokes to that and that, make it look pretty, the, the star of the show. Everyone will stop when you're passing the boat. They'll look at your cheeks, Trev. <laughs> That's the weld that we end up joining the inside of the pin. I'm not confident about doing the other side, but I'm, I'm confident about doing this side. I'm still getting my head around TIG welding. I find uh, the, feeding the rod in is the most difficult part for me, so I can do the reasonably nice sort of welds and so on when I don't have to feed rod, if, if I can melt the two metals together, but I'm still struggling with figuring out that rod aspect, um, not something I've ever had to do with MIG, so it's a learning process, but I feel like I'm getting there. I bloody hope I've welded this the right way around. Right, last weld on these ones, so that's coming up alright. Pretty happy with that. They're pretty tough. I'm not going to show you or tell you why, but we had to take one of them off. Took quite a lot. Don't think they're going to come off on their own. So next step, we've got to weld the, uh, the sides onto our top plate. This is the top plate for the arm. This is our guide pins that go up and down the sliders. We're just going to do a quick little tack in here and then take them up top and see if it's going to work. So we've tacked these together. So what we've done is tack the stainless to the mild steel plate. So underneath, down the bottom here, see if I can, 
work with me camera, you can see there's a tack right on that corner there. The two bits of stainless are tacked to the mild steel and the reason we did that is we wanted to keep them parallel while we did the bolts um, up nice and tight. So we're going to take that as a whole assembly up to the boat and then we can weld that onto the deck and also onto the arm. I feel like we're on the home stretch so um, I know that we've swapped over to a second wing rather than finishing off the first one but I think overall it's going to be faster doing it this way so um, we're learning stuff that we never knew about on that second wing um, which is pretty cool and I think that's going to help us overall save quite a lot of time so Rightio, we're getting close to something functional. All we need to do, we've got our stainless um, just tigged on, tacked uh, onto the mild steel top here, the, the arm, top of the arm. We need to bring the arm up so that it meets the underside of this piece of steel here. We'll weld this on with some flux core um, and then we'll uh, also weld up all of the uh, tacks that we've done with the TIG. We'll just weld all of that up properly with the MIG. Um, what we've had to do, let me see if I can show you on the other side. When we lift this wing, in fact, let me see if I can do it for you. you see that we can get it closer and closer to this. Um, we need to get the two basically bang on so that this stainless is sitting flush on the doubler as well as this piece of arm sitting flush on this piece of mild steel here. Oh, fine centre. Somewhere there. Two mil either side of this between the, the, the stainless okay. and this. Yeah, good, good. All right, I'll do a couple of tacks and we'll just get that in. Okay, I think that's on. Maybe? Yeah, that'll do, it won't move anywhere there. We're flicking the arm back over now, getting it out of the way, mainly so that we can get in and start welding the stainless onto the mild steel doubler. Over the back, Trev has just about finished. We're just getting the last of the sliders blasted, so these will go up on this side of the boat just here, you can see. This is where we got up to last night, so we managed to get it welded around the sides, either side and then one bead around the front. We've yet to do this back, so we're gonna give this a clean up with a grinder, get stuck in and weld that. We've got to yet weld around these areas. We've got a couple of little tacks just holding everything together, but you can see I've welded this inside edge on both of them here. Actually, sorry, I've done that one, I haven't done that one. If you look at that one there, you can see it's come out a square. See that there? So what my plan is, is to weld the inside, put the 12 ton jack but, uh, between those two and just crank it out, hold them where it needs to be. We'll be have all of, all of these sort of areas beat out. Um, and then yeah, with that pushed out square, we're just gonna weld the back end in as well. And that's that finished. So once we've done that, we can then sort of radius all of this so it's all nice and lovely. It's not gonna hurt anybody when we you know, use it in service. Um, and then, those pins there will also be square once we've pushed that out with the jack. So while all of that engineering has been happening, in the background we've been trying to figure out how do we replace our batteries. We've got four um, large capacity AGMs that are uh, our house bank. They're absolutely dead. Um, they weren't great quality batteries to start with but they've just completely crapped themselves um, and they need to be replaced. So. We had to spend the money in terms of getting new batteries, but I really didn't want to spend them on more AGMs. I've had really, really poor experience with AGMs. I, I quite like lead acids. I've had fantastic like experience with those over the years. Um, yeah, really, really great experience with those. Um, but I am pretty interested in looking at lithium. Um, and I found this thing uh, that I thought was a pretty interesting looking deal. This is what we're going to be using. So this guy here is a 24 volt, 100 amp hour battery and it's a lithium battery it's um, made up of uh, individual cells so I think from what are they 3.2 volt from memory 
Um, so there's eight of them stacked up to make a 24 volt bank. Obviously it's more than 24 if you do the maths, but that's how they work it out. Um, there's a lot of stuff hanging off the front of this, but I'll go into a bit more detail. Um, when I was at the shop that actually makes these, they had um, a whole stack of them in parts because they were assembling them. So I had a bit of an um, ability to look through them and see how they actually build these. So the stainless boxes get fitted out with high temp silicone wire. This is a tin marine wire. And then on the front you've got two Anderson plugs. These can do 50 amp in and out each. Um, we probably won't be using those. We'll be using the uh, terminals that go in and out of here. They can do bursts of up to 200 amps. So you can charge through these terminals as well as um, discharge through them. They've got a little battery monitor on the front to show you the state of charge. And then there's a few things like your USB plugs, some 12 volt cigarette lighter ports. Um, some of the other components down here we won't necessarily be using. The terminals are what we're mainly interested in and the state of charge. The individual cells are 3.2 volt cells held together with pretty solid bars. Um, and then uh, yeah they all fit into the box there's eight of them in each box and this is the battery management system that controls each individual cell so this will be the first of four of these that we get um you know obviously we're going to test it and make sure we're happy with it and if that all works out then yeah we'll grab a few more and we'll load them up under brewpeg's floor in the wheelhouse so obviously these are smaller in terms of capacity than what we've got now um, at the moment we've got 400 amp hours of usable capacity so an 800 amp hour 24 volt bank you can lose half of that in terms of capacity and you still have to retain half in the batteries we need to get four of these batteries in order to get the same overall capacity. However, um, we have the ability with these, given that they're a 24 volt battery, to basically buy one at a time and stack them up. So um, we're, a and, and one of the things I really, really love about these batteries, um, and I realized that as I was driving home after having you know bought it because I was really happy with what they do, the individual components. So if one cell dies, I can literally put a single cell in and retain the whole battery. Whereas if you've got a closed unit um, lithium battery like a sealed up plastic lithium battery if one cell dies the whole battery goes in the recycling bin um, so it's a kind of a waste of money doing it that way given that three quarters of the battery might be fine in this case if anything happens um, we're able to replace it out at sea we can literally pull a stainless steel box apart find out which cells the dud change that one cell and then we've got a battery that's good to go again so in terms of brew peg ethos of being repairable and having redundancy way better solution for us to have something that we can repair ourselves you got ice like summer sky If it's my good kill I'd die And now it starts to rain So let's enjoy it 